Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Hibernate and what it is and what we use it for. And I'll show you a working example of the little program I wrote. So first off, um, Hibernate is an ORM, which uh, ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. And really the, the purpose of it is if you think about databases, if you've ever used them before, um, you have different tables, different columns, and, and you fill those columns with data. And if you've ever programmed in an object-oriented language, um, you know a little bit about objects and that objects are going to have different methods. They're going to have uh, different variables within them. And what Hibernate does is it takes an object and all of the variables in it and the relationship um, that it has and it allows you to save that into a database and maintain those relationships. Um, so um, some of the advantages of using Hibernate uh, for any of you that have ever written some PHP uh, or built you know, websites using PHP, you'll know how to kind of interact with databases and that you have to run queries in order to save data and retrieve data from the database. Hibernate um, essentially does that for you because you're linking objects through XML um, directly to the database. So um, one nice thing about Hibernate is you can actually switch more easily from one type of database to another um, with, with certain databases sometimes your queries have to be different they um, don't they don't always have the exact same language and so hibernate eliminates that um, here's kind of a breakdown of the architecture so here we have our java java application and then you have your hibernate and you're going to have properties which are going to be um, just kind of the mappings of your objects in relation to the XML mapping that, that I'll show you later. And it'll make more sense when I get to that point. Um, but you're going to have your Java application, your, your Hibernate stuff, and then it's going to save it into your database. So those three components work together. Now within Hibernate, you're going to have different objects um, that we're going to use. So in the example I'm going to show you, you're going to see a configuration object that we're going to create. We're going to use a singleton pattern and create a session factory so that we can gain access to our database um, along with the session. You'll have a transaction, um, which again, if you've, if you've written PHP, uh, if, you, if you've used PHP with websites um, in querying, you'll, you'll use transactions um, when you're saving multiple pieces of data to the database at one time or doing multiple queries. Um, we'll have our query and our criteria. So let's take a look really quickly at just the little um, table that I created. So this is a very simple table. It took me a long time to get this Hibernate stuff to work. So all I have in here is a table called members um, in my database called user and I have an ID and a name and I'm just keeping it simple. <laughs> um, now let's see. So here, let's take a look at Hibernate and kind of how this works. So First of all, the way I set it up is um, I have a just a, a nice little web page that it's it's going to create. And don't worry too much about this stuff. This isn't really a part of Hibernate. This is just how I'm retrieving the data from it. Um, but you're going to have um, this Hibernate file here. And this is your configuration file. And this is going to have things like your, the dialect that you're going to be using of Hibernate. I'm using a MySQL dialect. Um, it's going to have my uh, connection 
driver to MySQL because that's what I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to have my connection um, through the my local host, and I, I'm using point, port 3306. Um, and then you'll have like your connection username uh, to connect to the database. I don't have a password set up on mine, otherwise I would have a password property as well. And then right here, um, this is where we actually pull in the mapping um, that we have to do for our um, to connect our, our Java program to our database. So let's take a look at that. So this is that mapping. It's pulling all of this in. And I have it pretty simple. Um, like I said, it's just going to be the class called members. And right here, at, I'm uh, telling it what class I'm, I'm linking to. This catalog is actually the database. And then this table is members, which I showed you earlier on my, um, on my PHP, my admin. Um, so I've got an ID. It's a type int. It's going to go into the column ID that I have in my database. And we um, have it set up in my database that it's an auto increment. And so we have to use this generator tag. And the class is identity. Uh, then um, the other property that I have is just a name. And it's a type string. And I'm putting that in the column name. Uh, so now let's look at the Java side of this. So here's my member class. And again, I've just got an, an ID and a name. Um, I've got a, a blank um, constructor. And then I have another constructor that um, I'm going to use to add a name upon creation. And then I just have some getters and setters. So um, now let's take a look at kind of what we're going to be doing here. So I've got two little methods that I'm going to, I'll show you. Um, first, we'll look at this one here. So what I've done is I, I created a, a member. And then we have to create this hibernate utility helper, which I'm going to show you that class in a second, too. Um, because that's how we're going to actually create our our uh, session factory and gain access to the database, set up that connection. And then we're going to have a session object. And then I, I just threw this in here so that it, it made it easier to print out the name um, when we get to that part. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a member. We're going to pass in, we'll just call it Mr. Potato Head. And, um, then right here, we are going to gain, open that session to our database. Um, and actually, let's sec, let's go take a look at that. So here's our here's our uh, Hibernate utility, and this was the trickiest part of this because Hibernate has updated their API several times, and it doesn't seem like anybody has any really good tutorials on what the new standard is. But in piecing a lot of different tutorials together, I finally came up with some working stuff. Um, you guys are more than welcome to use it and, and kind of play around with this. Um, but the first thing we have to do is uh, create a configuration object here. And this is going to configure um, our settings that we have in this Hibernate CFG XML file, um, which again is just going to tell it the dialect, the driver connection, and um, how we're going to connect to our database. Um, then we're going to have to create a, a standard service registry builder. And um, this is where it gets kind of uh, really all of this is different than the old way. I guess that they used to use for Hibernate. Um, and really what we're doing here is we're setting up, we're just going, we're, we're making this uh, session factory. And 
this is a singleton pattern, which means you can only have um, one of these objects running at one time. That's why this is uh, this little bit that we're doing here is static, um, which is also why when I return this session factory, when I call it in that in our data Java up here, uh, we we just get the one um, object back. Um, so now we'll head back here. So once we have that session open, we're just going to begin a transaction. We're going to save the member that we created up here. And then it doesn't actually get saved into the beta database until you commit the transaction. So if you've ever used like GitHub, just think of it that way. You, you have to commit and then push uh, before it'll actually be into the database. And here, commit is essentially pushing. And then we're going to close that connection. So now that we kind of looked at that, let's actually see it in action. So I showed you, let's see, let's switch back to that really quick. I showed you in here. So these are ones I've already added. Um, so right now our ID is 11. That's the la last one that we have. Actually, I'm going to refresh this to make sure I haven't done it since. Yeah, so 11 is the last ID that we have. Now we're going to run this. Okay, so when I hit add user, you'll notice the search changed up here. And we'll go back to PHP my admin and refresh this. And now I have another Mr. Potato Head. So now let me show you that second um, method that, that I have in here called get name. And really what this, all this is doing is um, it's just retrieving the object from the database. So again, we have to create um, that connection and we'll begin our transaction. And this time what we'll do is we are going to get a class and right here what we're doing is we're getting um, this is the serializable number and it's I have it set up so that it's the I it's just the ID um, of the database so like one it's uh, retrieving like we saw here Oh, oops, that's the wrong thing. Here we go. Right here, one is receiving Richard because in our in my database, where did that go? Here we go. That is ID one. Now, if we want to retrieve Steve, let's put in eight, so you can see how that works. So we'll change that to eight. Go ahead and run it again. And we retrieve Steve. So that's the basics of it there. Um, and then all I'm doing down here is I'm just setting this variable name to what I'm actually getting back. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, this retrieves just an object. Um, and so that's why I'm typecasting it back to a member's object so that we can use this uh, so we can access the, the name variable there and use the method so yeah that's the basics of it um, it doesn't look like a whole lot but this probably took about eight to ten hours just hunting down the right sources and trying to figure out how to get the connection and, and uh, troubleshooting it um, I'm going to post all of the helps that I I use to get to this point because um, I, I know a lot of you are probably struggling with getting this started and um, there's a few quick little things actually maybe I'll hurry and just show you um, I got hung up on a, a couple of them it's actually really easy to set up hibernate with with NetBeans and the first thing you have to do is just go to tools you'll go to plugins and then in here um, I already had it installed. You may not. You can check really fast by just typing in hibernate. 
and you'll notice I've, I've already got this here. If you don't have it installed, you simply just go to Available Plugins, type in Hibernate. Mine's not going to show up because I already have it installed, but it'll show up right here, and you just quickly download it. Um, after you download that, this I kept getting a bunch of errors saying that I, I didn't have the MySQL JDBC driver. Um, they make it really easy. You just right click on libraries, add library. You'll scroll down here to MySQL JDBC driver, and you'll just add that to the library. I've already added it, so I'm not going to do that, but um, that'll help you get connected to your database there. And um, of course, you have to have a local server running. Um, I'm using exam, and I just made a quick little table, uh, which I showed you earlier. Um, so I, I guess if, I mean, there's tons of tutorials to, to know how to, to learn that, so I won't, I won't really go over that. But anyways, those are the two things that really got me hung up, along with figuring out how to get the right, um, the non-deprecated method of creating this session factory. That was the most difficult part. Um, you can see where I have it commented out. This is actually all you had to do the old way. You just created a service registry object. Um, and then you did like the configuration properties and everything all in one line. Now apparently you have to do it in five or six. So <laughs> good luck with that. Um, but this is working code. So you can, like I said, use this. I'm going to push it to GitHub and I'll put my GitHub um, link along with the YouTube video if you want to play around with it. So thanks for watching, and that's all I've got to share.